what should I say about that? Well, mm, this video is going to be controversial. Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and welcome to another video in our series on programming advice. I'm going to talk about topics that I hear often from beginners to experts and just want to disclose my perspective on a few things. And today is a question that I get often asked from beginning programmers, and they ask me what programming languages, that's plural, should I learn? Or they're trying to figure out what programming language should they learn next after they've taken a course with me or maybe done some personal project. So what should I say about that? Well, mm, this video is going to be controversial. No, <laughs> because there's lots of programming languages out there and lots of folks have their favorites. But I want to rather just disclose some of my advice from my perspective about what programming paradigms that you should actually learn. Now, with that said, I'm going to give you a few pragmatic programming languages that go with that so that you have some takeaways or at least a little bit of direction if you need a specific language to learn. So with that said, I'll give my best answers, but there's a few different constraints, uh, again, that you must understand. So again, I'm not necessarily going to give you the most popular language or what I think is the best language. Now that said, the second point is I do have my own personal bias in that I am worked primarily as a sort of systems -y or graphics programmer. So that's where I tend to lean on when I've learned programming. And that's also just what I enjoy. And finally, there's a good chance that you're going to use dozens of programming languages. They might be very small, tiny languages, or maybe you'll learn a handful of general purpose languages throughout your programming career. So again, there's no real right answer here, but the important thing is for you to really think about languages as tools and actual language programming constructs as your thing that you are yielding to accomplish your goal. So with that said, that's enough of an intro. Let's go ahead and dive into the first programming language. So the first of five programming languages that you should learn is a scripting language. Why a scripting language? One, often it is probably easy to learn and pick up. In fact, it's a great place for beginners to start. Scripting languages also let you prototype very quickly if you have ideas, need to test algorithms, or just get something done in a short amount of time. So pragmatically what this means or the language I'm going to recommend is Python. It's very user friendly. It's available on Windows, Linux, Mac, and many other systems so you can easily get it installed. And th there's good chance that you're going to actually be able to use it as a software engineer on your job. Pragmatically, it's also a great language for students to learn because when you do whiteboard interviews, well, Python tends to work very well for, well, just getting your job and starting your career. So I recommend Python 3 as a great scripting language to learn, but you need to learn one in general, whether that's going to be Ruby, JavaScript, which I'll address later, or just some other language like TypeScript, again, that lets you prototype your ideas very quickly and just get the software you need completed. Now, that leads us to our second programming language, which I recommend, which is a systems programming language. Now, obviously, a systems programming language is going to have different constraints for the type of thing you would use it versus the scripting language, but a systems language itself lets you think about the data as you're laying it out in memory. So this means that a lot of things aren't being taken care of for you, and a systems language is something that you often have to compile. You're compiling for a specific machine architecture, which forces you to think about the machine that you're compiling for and often performance. So the systems language that I'm going to recommend for folks is C. Yes, in fact, C, not Rust, not Go or other hip languages that are coming out, but C. It's the foundation. It's a language that's still used in production. And when you learn C, then you appreciate some of the built-in or other language constructs in some of these other languages that are coming out today, like Rust and Go and so on. C, however, does have some advantages that do stand with it. One, again, it's very widely used on open source or commercial products, so you know it's probably a good fit if you're just looking for a job and trying to have something that sort of covers your bases. I think other languages like Rust and Go and whatever else comes out will, again, rise in popularity, but I always recommend starting from the fundamentals. The other reason that's really cool to use C is that, well, if you want to do embedded design or programming or work with Arduinos, C is available pretty much everywhere. So whether, again, you're doing really low-level stuff with more computer engineering or higher level stuff like desktops or building apps, you can use the C programming language. It's super portable, it's super lightweight, and you can learn the basics of the language as far as the syntax in essentially a day. There's really, it's not a big complex language. All right, so 
The third programming language that I would recommend that folks learn is a web programming language. So, well, what does this mean at a minimum? Uh, actually, <laughs> this category actually messes up the whole video in the sense of five programming languages, because the web itself is, well, a bunch of frameworks and languages all sort of glued together. So let me just say this. At a minimum, you should learn HTML and CSS. You've got to be able to build a website, uh, build a portfolio for yourself, market yourself, and be able to have an online presence at the minimum. So that's what I always recommend for my students, at least to learn HTML and CSS. Most folks can get away with just installing some sort of software, a WordPress, a blog software, or whatever, and that's good enough, but it's nice to know a little bit about what's going on the web. So I would actually recommend as far as a web programming language to learn JavaScript. Again, this is the same reason I recommend C in the above systems category. The web is built on JavaScript, whether that's scary or not scary to you, depends on how much JavaScript programming you've done, I suppose. But the reality is it's really nice to know the foundation language, be able to open a web browser up and just write some code. JavaScript could also qualify as your scripting language in that it lets you quickly prototype software. And once you understand the problems that you're solving when you're building software in JavaScript, then maybe you'll choose a different language if things like scale or the complexity or the concurrency or these kind of things matter to you. But I would always recommend folks to please start with, or at least to consider programming in learning JavaScript first. Now, something else I'll also throw in this category, though it's not strictly web, but at least in the context that I've used it, is to learn a database language, something like SQL, the structured query language, so that you can know how to store data. It's a little bit of a different pr programming paradigm than maybe you're used to, but I think it's something that folks can pick up the basics of in a relatively short time and It'll also help you use the right tool to solve the right problem if you're trying to store a large quantity of data and retrieve that data quickly. All right, so the fourth category of programming languages that I think you should learn is a functional programming language. Now, why would I say that you need to learn something functional when perhaps your day job or all the classes that you're taking in university right now are all object-oriented or procedural languages? Well. The reality is I'm observing a shift where a lot of modern and new programming languages are borrowing features from functional programming languages that have been around for, well, honestly, the 50s and the 60s, so a very, very long time. Functional programming languages often make you think about how to manipulate data directly, so it's erasing a lot of the noise that often other programming languages make you wrestle with. So the actual language that I'd recommend is OCaml. It's a great language that lets you write functional style code. That's sort of the default programming paradigm to use, but you can also lean on doing stuff in object oriented or procedural styles if you must. And in fact, OCaml is a functional language that I do see in production quite a bit, both outwardly by some larger companies, as well as just colleagues who use OCaml for side projects and helping them manipulate data or get tasks done on their actual software engineering job. The other language that I'm going to toss in here briefly is Haskell, just because it's going to stretch your imagination a little bit on how you think about programming. And I think it just might be a fun exercise for folks. But in general, I'm going to go ahead and throw OCaml here as my functional style language that I think folks could benefit from learning if you're not sure or haven't been exposed to one. All right, the final category and the fifth programming language that you should learn. And this category is a little bit of a toss up in the sense that I'm going to let you choose, but it should be some language that you absolutely enjoy working in. Maybe by necessity, you just have to work in it for your job or whatever your dream job is. But this is a language that you should look at as maybe your long term language, the language that you want to master, a language that you want to be a part of the community because you enjoy it. Or again, the language that just lets you get a task done the most efficient way possible. So for me, often this language for games and graphics development is C++, and that's modern C++, which I consider almost a different language than the earlier versions uh, from the 90s. And it is something that I do enjoy because it lets me solve the right problem with the right tool. Because remember, languages are tools and they give you different toolboxes to solve problems. At the end of the day, all we're doing is manipulating data. So you have to find the right tool that lets you solve that problem at the right scale and with the right performance. So how are you going to learn these languages? Well, you know, if I'm approaching a student with this, you're not going to learn all five of these all at the same time. In fact, that's probably a bad idea. Pick up little projects, 
program in a language that you're enjoying in one of these categories, and even try to re-implement that same project in the different languages if you'd like. That can be a great way to learn the language. You don't have to think about as much the design, but can rather see how to solve the problem with the language in that language's particular programming paradigm. Which language you're going to learn this year? What's going to be the new language or the new paradigm that you're excited about learning? Have you ever programmed in a functional language? Or maybe you haven't done much object-oriented programming. So go ahead and comment below what you're going to learn here. For me, I've actually got a surprise of what language that I'm learning right now. It's not too different from the language that I usually use, C++, but it is one that I enjoy and I do feel like I'm being very efficient in when I'm working. So let me know what language you're learning, because let's be honest, there's lots of great programming languages out there, so mastering the right tool for the right problem is always the right choice. But I hope this list will help at least inform you if you've got no direction of which language to pick. And if you've got more questions, I'll try to come out here with more answers and give you some more programming advice. So hope you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe if you did, and we'll see you next time, folks. Take care.